think I got enough calories to burn that I can actually think about a robot now. Combat Automaton, which became self-aware. Aiming for 10 in a row here. And I think our, our best choices are either the common relic or to swap our starter relic for a boss relic. Which one we pick is going to depend on exactly the act layout. And it looks like we've got a fairly flexible initial act. We don't have to fight any elites at all, which is encouraging. Any elites that we do want to fight might be after the... Do two combats, then two events. Go here. Red path, maybe take this elite if we feel really good. Intended path looking like this. I think this is a situation where t trading your starting relic away for a random boss relic is going to be a pretty good idea on average, especially with defect. Although that starting crack core is really nice uh, for shorter fights in Act 1, it very quickly falls off to almost useless. And there's a lot of boss relics that can help out the defect a lot more. That said, there are a couple of ones that we could get that would make things much more difficult, at least in the short term. But even those ones, like Busted Crown, offer at least something in compromise for what's been taken. Lance Bro says, do I think the Defect is the least equipped to take on early elites? No, I do not. I think the Defect is much better than Silent is at Act 1 elites. And the big reason why is orbs. You can fill those orb slots with anything. A per turn effect is going to be exceedingly useful against the sentries, given how long that fight takes on average, and against Lagavulin, because the orbs are not affected by the minus strength and dexterity that Lagavulin creates. This gives Defect a natural advantage in those two elite fights, the sentries and the Lagavulin. Now, Gremlin Knob, that's a different story. Gremlin Ob is still a very, very big threat to the defect, just like it is to every character other than Watcher, really. Uh, and so you have to shape your early potion usage and damage card picks around being able to get through those elite fights. The, the Watcher, the, 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 being able to get through the Gremlin Ob fight specifically. I am going to do the boss swap. We get a Choker. We get more energy per turn, but we can only play six cards per turn. And I'm going to say that Velvet Choker is, one, not that big a problem for the defect, two, really good right now. <clears throat> Currently, we can't even draw six cards per turn, so how could we possibly play six cards per turn? And three, this early on, uh, we have the most opportunity to shape our entire deck around the confine of the Velvet Choker. This does mean that we can't do any sort of infinite combo based deck, but I think there are some very good options that still lie before us. Probably something orb heavy, because having those passive per turn effects would be good. However, this early on, it's just a strict upside. Like I said, we have we have no downside to the Velvet Choker until we add the ability to play six cards, which is currently non-existent. The other thing I don't like about Velvet Choker is that it makes certain potions a bit less useful, notably the Distilled Chaos that plays the top three cards of your deck, which is counts against you in terms of total card plays. So that is a potential problem that can arise, but it's not too bad. It's really not too bad. Mike and Jen, thanks for nine months of support. Iron says, a defect base deck beats everything except Hexaghost. Honestly, kind of true. If you've ever been inclined to do a starter deck only challenge, no cards other than the cards you start with, the defect is actually one of the best candidates for that. So I guess the only real question before us is, do we still feel confident about the path that we've chosen? Do we want to maybe incorporate an option to go burning elite? I don't think we're going to be strong enough to do this, barring some real wackery occurring, but we, we could try with the extra energy to make this a four elite act. And even in the situation where we don't, so here's what that path is going to look like. I'm going to mark this one in yellow for the moment. 
Uh, I think what we would do is take three combat rewards, then decide whether shop or event. Um, fight this elite, and then we can get onto the green path from here, or opt to fight the burning elite now. And if we get a card like Doom and Gloom in the first, or Sunder, in the first few card rewards, this could be doable. And that's about the same path as saying that we would take the red option on the green path currently. I like that more. Four energy per turn, life is easy. Although the lack of starting orb to go with the dual cast will be a little annoying. For the most part, just getting to spend more stuff each turn is going to be so, so nice. Don't even really have to think that much about what I'm doing here. These don't say doom and gloom. However, a first floor genetic algorithm, pretty hard to turn down, huh? If I am ever mispronouncing your name and it bothers you, please let me know. I am going to go with this early algorithm. Might befit me to take a beam cell. I'm not too afraid because of the shop coming up. And if you're not pronouncing it Ragnarug, are you even doing it correctly? Cryptic Zen, thanks for the prime sum. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Uh-oh, my money on a card removal. I feel like if I remove a card here, it has to be a defend. Or we have to tell Cleric no, because I plan on having the option of going to the shop. I'd rather just remove a defend and rule out the shop entirely. Is there a website? Yes. You want data on my runs? Or details of the sort? You can get a whole sort of informational breakdown on my stream, my content. Not, not any other Slay the Spire players. To my knowledge, nobody's made anything to consolidate that kind of information. Um, but I make everything available all in one place there, Bailalord.tv. If you want to track your own win rates, then Slay the Spire conveniently keeps a lot of information for you in the form of the, the run histories, which are actual files located in the game directory. You can take those files and look at them in aggregate um, and get information like that, which is essentially what we did to create that website. I think you can still upload your run files to Spire Logs. I don't know if that website is still operational. All right, I'm going to remove a defend here. Uh, because of the aforementioned problem of an upcoming Gremlin knob potential. And because we just picked up a block card, the genetic algorithm. And we'll continue on our way here. It's pop. Block, block. Four energy sure is nice. These aren't the cards I'm looking for. Go for the eyes, heat sinks, leap. Heat sinks in this situation, more like heat stinks. Am I right, Jasper Lovator? Unfortunately, with no powers in the deck, it's going to be pretty hard to justify taking this card. With potential Gremlin Knob upcoming, it's pretty hard to justify this card. Do we simply settle for a go for the eyes? It's not the ideal card with a Velvet Choker, but it is a card with a lot of long-term utility on defect. I'm really happy to have it later on in the run. And I think it does contribute something meaningful here in the short term. Ah, finally, I took a joke bad enough. Hold a joke bad enough. We have a properly satisfied crowd. Good. It's not ideal. But it's leaps and bounds better than this card. It's 
So we're gonna take it. I'm not happy that we took it, but we're taking it. If nothing else, it could be nice for Awaken 1 later on. And we're really hoping to see something actually decent drop from this cultist. Oof. So it's correct not to play dual cast the first time. Oh well. I think we learned that rule and then I forgot it. Maybe that was with a nuclear battery. Hmm. All right, I'll count that as a decent potion. Unfortunately, damage still not here. I think that means we're sufficiently desperate that I go to this shop anyway, and we purchase an attack card. Hopefully there's one we can afford. We could only afford a common one, or one that's on sale. We could also afford a common potion. But what if knobs simply didn't exist? I mean, with four energy and a velvet choker, I'm a thousand percent going to take equilibrium here. What are we drinking today? This is a San Pellegrino Blood Orange Black Raspberry. Which I've uh, been going through this week. like to have a couple every now and then. Generally speaking, I drink just straight water where available. Yoink. All right, we are going to go to the to the shop, even though our low gold makes it pretty difficult to afford something really good here. I'm actually entirely happy with a rebound. I think this will solve basically all of our problems. Could opt for a focus potion or colorless potion instead, but rebounding equilibrium is going to be very, very helpful. It's better than base damage. Goes with a flex potion. It's going to be good. It's a great way to get a username, Jasper. Really like that. Turns out Gremlin Knob was real the whole time. Well, the good news is we prepared for this situation by getting a rebound. The equilibrium and go for the eyes might be a little bit dead weight, and we're going to have to play Zap when we draw it. Fortunately, we can use Equilibrium to retain the go for the eyes until the appropriate turn. We could also use it to set up a pretty good flex potion turn. This doesn't seem like it's going to go too badly. I think this turn we do go Equilibrium, Strike, Strike. Use the flex potion next turn. We'll have Rebound, Strike, and go for the eyes at minimum. And if we play the strikes now, we'll have a higher chance of redrawing them. Okay, so yes, Equilibrium Strike Strike this turn. This is going to go better than you might expect. Got the Equilibrium back, I like that. And we know exactly what we're drawing next turn. Minimum two strikes. So I think this is Rebound the Go for the Eyes. Play the Equilibrium, do some math. Use the Flex Potion next turn, probably. Next turn we can go for the eyes in three strikes. So that would be what? We do 12 damage this turn. In equilibrium. Next turn we deal Eight plus thirty-three. Three strikes, fifty-three total. So we do need the zap dual cast in there for that to kill. Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay, so that means the line is this. This turn, we rebound, go for the eyes, equilibrium, zap. From the knob deals 28, we block for 13, we take 15. On this turn, we drink the Flex Potion. 
play all of our attacks. And then kill with the dual cast, just barely. We get through the fight without that much health lost. And we get a dead branch. You saw how crucial the rebound was to making that work. Really glad we had it. Offered a meteor strike. Hmm. Dead branch meteor strike. Fascinating. Now, Meteor Strike is going to give us an energy with which we can play many, many more cards, which is not necessarily helpful when we're limited into how many cards we can play. But Defect All does have some very good angst cost cards that could be follow-ups to that. Well, I can't say we're on, uh, we're uh, able to fight this burning readily here, but I do think we're on fantastic path otherwise. In really good shape. So, core problem, obviously, with the Meteor Strike is that we can't play it right now. We don't have the ability to gain sufficient energy unless the Dead Branch creates something. But we do have Equilibrium, we do have Rebound. We do have a need for a really big and powerful card. And we would already like to have a double energy. So... I'm kind of thinking about this. There are only a handful of ways that you can truly scale a deck of cards with the Velvet Choker. Cards like Meteor Strike are one such way. If we weren't already so block heavy, I'd take the Reinforced Body. I think that's a really good pickup with a Velvet Choker. I mean, I guess I could still take it, the Reinforced, and be pretty okay with that. But this Meteor Strike... I think it's going to be... It might take a while. But it's going to be very easy to make this playable later. All we need is one more energy in, on any turn to be able to do it. We're going to have so many opportunities to do that. I'm going to pick this up. Hmm. You come across a dead adventurer on the floor. His pants have been stolen. And the armor and face appear to be scoured by flames. This man has had a run-in with one of the elites of the Spire, specifically the Three Sentries. That's what the event text tells you. We just picked up a dead branch. So I have no fear of dazed. And we have four energy per turn with which to spend all those cards. I think these Sentries, if we run across them, will be very easy to kill. Which means I think we can search in this man's lack of pants to see if we can find ourselves a relic. Instead, we find ourselves a fight... If we win this fight, we'll get the rewards for killing an elite. Come on, Dead Branch, give me a double energy or something. That works? No, that doesn't work at all. All right, well, we tried. Let it be known that we tried. Main priority in this fight, kill one of the ones in the front or back. As quickly as you can. I've said this draw order, less than ideal. Definitely not helping here. Like I said, I, I think things will soon be under control. Hopefully. Surely. Surely this will go well for us. Rather than playing the orbs, feel pretty compelled here to strike twice, just to make sure we can target our damage. Seems most important of all. And we want to also want to make sure these strikes are going back into the draw pile, so I have damage that I can draw. Go. The worry here is that I might take 20 on this turn. No, thank goodness. We got rebound and strike. Easy peasy. Let's rebound the equilibrium. All right, no problem at all. Keep on holding on. Also, what's this? Good. Give me this. No zero cost cards. I think I'll still use it for the 10 damage though.
Behold, the Meteor Strike. It has come to pass that that card was good. So even with what was probably not a very good draw order, we managed to only take 10 there thanks to... One, the, base, the basic power of four energy per turn, letting us just output more strikes, more defense. We've been very, very useful in these first few fights. Uh, and two, the dead branch generating new cards for us. Immensely helpful. There it is, the double energy. Bring it. Absolutely. What a find. Oh my goodness. So, we draw double energy and meteor strike in the same hand. We can then, then play them both. Well, the double energy will also give us more energy and then generate a new random card via Dead Branch, and that alone can be very useful. Napalm Shimmer, thanks for 16 months of support. Believe it or not, I think my first upgrade might be the Rebound itself. Definitely do like a couple of upgrades here. We might end up resting here. need more damage. And that will be our best attack upgrade for a little while. What's in the box? The Koye. Merchant now restocks cards, relics, and potions. All relics are reduced, all prices are down by 20%. So that's more money for the rest of the run, as well as the ability to buy more of a specific thing. The ability to see more options in the shop, ultimately, I suppose. It's pretty nice. On its own, not amazing. If we can also find the membership card or one of the three egg relics, it can get a lot better. So going into our next elite fight, note that this elite can be the three centuries again. Because the last elite we fought officially was the Gremlin Knob here right, before, right after the shop. The centuries that we just fought were an event. And so, the elite that we're about to fight is a 50% chance to be either the Three Sentries or the Lagavulin. But it won't ever be Gremlin Knob, as that's officially our previously fought elite. We got Lagavulin here. Won't ever be the Gremlin Knob, rather. So, can't play the Meteor Strike here. Probably just going to let this turn pass. We have to, up to three turns before the Lag of Ulin awakens. So I could play the Devil Energy here and try to wake up this turn. Pretty unlikely to work out, though. I think we want to wait one more turn. And then do as much as we can with whatever this turn ends up being. Oh, Rainbow! Very good card. Get one of each orb type, including a Dark Orb, as well as a Recursion. Spicy. Oh, juicy spicy. I can play Recursion instead of Zap. I'm not going to play both here. We definitely want the Frost Orb in front. We also want to play Strike a bunch of times. This way. We can't play the Goku of the Eyes because the Joker. Get a streamline for some bonus damage. Look how useful the. Dead Branch is being so far in these early fights. Just from the Ascender's Bane sometimes. Perfect ish turn. We can recursion the 24 damage Dark Orb next turn. Even better. Play this. Glacier. Cool. So we want a recursion and then glacier to push the Dark Orb back to the front. Rather than using the rebound. Anything that can evoke this will cause us to win. Cool. We get 30 bucks. Lantern. We now start with five energy on turn one, allowing us to play Meteor Strike if we draw it then. And we're offered Claw Hologram Sweeping Beam. 
Although we are limited in cards per turn with the Velvet Choker, I think the ability to return a card to our hand is still obscenely useful here. And the fact that this hologram is unupgraded actually is better because of Dead Branch. Sweeping Beam with an upgrade actually wouldn't be too bad either, quite frankly. I'm taking the hollow. More exhausting for now is good. There's a limit to how much exhaust we want to play with, but one or two per turn is, is going to be consistently quite useful. We don't necessarily want to take an upgrade or recycle, though. We need our exhaust effects to also do something meaningful at the same time. All right, show me the new card. Again, we get a rainbow. Perfect. And a core surge. Even perfecter. And a blizzard. Less perfect, but it'll do. Take that, foul beasts. You're dead first. You will die second. Oops. Didn't matter at all, though. Fusion, a charge battery, or a rebound. Fusion could be a way to get the Meteor Strike online quite reliably. I'm not sure how I feel about it, though, as a card. Might be a bit overkill. Second rebound is acceptable. Charge battery makes the Meteor Strike more reliably playable and further contributes to the blocking game. But we're about to fight another Elite, so I really don't want to take a block right now. I think we'll skip this one. Bay227, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Ancient Potion Flex Potion together are especially strong, if we want them to be. So let's keep them that way, for now. That could be a nice way to get through Gremlin Knob, if we encounter him a second time. Not that we had too much trouble the first time. I almost want to upgrade this Meteor Strike, but I think we're better off upgrading the Go for the Eyes, for now. That'll be a long-term useful upgrade. We could consider resting here, but I don't think we're in enough trouble. We don't want another block for the elite fight because we're worried about the possibility of Gremlin Nub again. Not upgrading the double energy, no. Either either I draw it with the card I want to or I don't. If in either case, I, I don't need more energy from the double energy. Can't rebound it either, sadly. But I can unnecessarily play it here. Beep. Fire potion. Heat sinks are back. Still no powers. Sex weird. Recursion. Recursion in a deck that has no starting orbs is really a hard sell because it's completely useless on the first turn. And I don't feel like adding any dead weight to this deck right now, so I'm going to skip. We will take the Fire Potion over the Ancient Potion, however, so that we can more easily kill a Gremlin Knob. Is Branch not powers enough? It's certainly powerful. It's not the right kind of power, though. Pretty happy to use a Fire Potion on this fight. I think the hologram fetches the equilibrium for next turn. Yeah, it does. Nice FTL draw.
Maybe I could use the flex potion instead of the fire potion. I don't think the flex potion is very good otherwise now. This is not a gremlin knob, so I'm no longer worried. Let's do that. Keep the fire pot. Lose the flex potion here. We used it earlier in the turn. We could have uh, outright killed that one, but we still get a guaranteed kill next turn with strike and a full block with equilibrium, so I don't think it's going to matter much. And again, now it's not feeling compelled to upgrade the double energy because even without the upgrade, it lets us play the meteor strike. What more could you possibly want? Found a block. Sure. Might as well. Yeah, might as well. Bonk him again. Good old Juzu Bracelet. Will it do anything this run? That is the question. Oh man, and there's the card I was uh, discussing about whether I want it or not. I said I wouldn't want to recycle. Do I still feel that way now? Literally looking at it against these other options. Recycle allows us to exhaust a card of our choosing, getting a new card. Now, without the Velvet Choker, this is a no-brainer alongside Deadbrand. With the Velvet Choker, becomes a problem, because there's only so many cards we can play each turn. That said, I do like it alongside the Meteor Strike as a way to get that online. I don't, don't necessarily think we'll upgrade this, but I think it does have use. Okay, let's try it. We don't want to take more than one, however. What do I want to upgrade here? Oddly compelled to upgrade Equilibrium. I could also see Recall. Hmm, that's fun. There's some use for the double energy upgrade, but it's not that important. It's unfortunate we weren't able to find any true... Maybe I do upgrade Recycle. Okay. Yeah, I think I do upgrade Recycle, actually. Makes it zero cost consistently, although we might end up taking a Sneko Eye. Um, I'm okay if, if that's what we end up doing here. Other option is to upgrade the Meteor Strike, so that it itself does significantly more damage during the Hexaghost fight. But I think it'll be easier to play the first Meteor Strike, and therefore all the subsequent Meteor Strikes, if we upgrade this Recycle. So that we can exhaust a Strike and then have 5 energy. Or this could happen. Alright, I'll exhaust a Strike and gain something else. Strike is technically damaged, but looking at more cards, I think here is more important. Alright, and there's Meteor Strike that I now can't play. I see, I see. What else we got for Meathead Branch? Another Meteor Strike. Fascinating news. And a Heat Sinks in a Blizzard. Excellent. Just what I wanted. Thanks. Yikes. I have to tell you, chat, this is about as bad as things could be. I don't know if we're going to win this fight anymore. Kind of bad. 
I think I'm rebounding Equilibrium. That'll block for me next turn and maybe allows me to double energy a Meteor, but unfortunately, Hologram and the Meteor Strikes have been separated here. This is pretty gnarly. All this in my hand. There we go. Okay. We can successfully play Meteor Strike. I'm going to recycle this Blizzard and then double energy and then Meteor Strike, I think. Well, hot dang. Good job, Dead Branch. It's a job well done. It's all Meteor Strikes, always has been. But I'm telling you. So, three cards left. Cannot play the second Meteor Strike this turn. Having three of them for later is great. So I think I'll maybe, what, charge battery and zap? Get a bit more damage out of that. Or I could hologram something. Charge battery zap and defend, rather. Keep the hologram for now. Until I can actually use it to play a Meteor Strike. Okay, no longer nearly as worried about my damage output. As I was a moment of four. There's still some bad things that could happen here. Thankfully, we still have a fire potion. Could rebound the charge battery, try to survive next turn. I think we're better off rebounding the meteor strike. Trying to turn this into a win very shortly. Uh, how much health do we bring the ghost down to? We do 36 this turn, 111 minus 36. 20 more for the fire potion. We need to do 55 in addition to the fire potion. Two meteor strikes makes that pretty possible. Or meteor strike, meteor strike, hologram meteor strike. Though it is a lot more survivable of a turn with the charge battery. I could do some complex... Hmm. I think we need to do some math. Comparing our best draws, or our, our solvable draws, with each option. Understood. Uh, so this will require a hypergeometric distribution. If you're ever asking yourself, what are my exact odds to draw cards? in the draw pile, then the hypergeometric probability calculator is what you need. So, if we put Meteor Strike on top of the deck, we're looking to do either 55 damage or draw well enough to block. We're looking at 6x6 six attack damage incoming. We currently have 19 health. So we need to mitigate... Uh, 36 minus 20. 16 damage. That's actually not that bad. Go for the eyes will block for 12. Equilibrium blocks for 13. Either paired with a hologram is pretty good. We're much more likely to get block with the charge battery on top. But either way, if we're putting a card on top, there'll be 13 cards in the draw pile. 
So, with two Meteor Strikes and Recycle, Recycle can change things. An Equilibrium and Hologram. What do we need to actually draw to kill? We would need to see two Meteor Strikes and an additional 12 damage. Right, 48 uh, plus 12. Well, more than... I guess Strike Zap would do it too, right? It's not actually 12. It's 55, so... Uh, just 7 more. 48 plus 6 is 54, yeah. So uh, we just need to draw any two of these plus any two damage cards. Any, any two Meteor Strike plays. So two out of three for the Meteors. And, and two out of three for the damage cards. Or three out of three. Actually, and they go for the eyes even counts because we're only looking for nine, uh, seven total. So any two of those four. We also instantly win if we draw Meteor Strike, Meteor Strike, Hologram. Heck. So that's quite a few specific situations that can that can win. So what does that actually mean in terms of total stats? I'm not 100% sure how to break that down into its constituent parts to get the, the total. I guess we would look at the most likely, or we can add them up individually of those possibilities. So there are 13 cards in the draw pile. If we're just talking about the Meteor Strikes, there are going to be three. The one that's... We're also guaranteed to draw the directly on top. So we're actually just looking at a population size of 12. Because we're guaranteed to get the one that's def definitely on top. We draw four additional random cards. So how we should conceptualize this is 12 card draw pile, all these 12 cards, plus the card we choose to put on top and four random draws. So we're sample sizing four, and there are two successes in the sample. The other Meteor Strike and the other Hologram. So the odds of getting... Both the Hologram and the Meteor Strike is only 9%. If we're looking at the... To get the odds of uh, just one of them, though. Is going to be 57%. And what about the odds of the two out of four damage cards? I should really be writing this down. It'd be easier to compare. Properly scientific and all. I'm not going to, though. So if there are 492 of them, that means we're about 40% chance to get two damage cards. So it's either 9% to instantly win, or... Um, the... 40% chance of getting the two mini damage cards. 0.4 times the probability of getting one other hologram or meteor strike, which was 0.57 or so. So about a 22% chance, cumulative total, about 31% chance that we would kill, looks like. It's the chance of either drawing meteor strike, meteor strike, hologram, or meteor strike plus Hologram, one meteor strike, and then two out of four, zap, zap, strike, strike, go for the eyes, accounting for the damage from the fire potion that we can deal. The other option, surviving, requires that we draw what? Is equilibrium and go for the eyes alone enough? Yes. As is, go for the eyes, defend, defend. As is, equilibrium, defend, defend. As is, equilibrium, hologram. What else is in the, the discard pile currently? There's an auto shields. I can't use that. But a charge battery will be in the discard pile. So I can hologram for charge battery too. So odds of survival are pretty good on their own. I 
And I guess the question ultimately is, does rebounding the charge battery improve our survival chance by more than 31 or so percent? So, if we're operating from a base value of 26 health, assuming charge battery on top, and then three energy to spend? No, we have infinite energy, right? Because we have three plasma. All the energy in the world. We need to draw, with 36 incoming damage, we need to draw 10 or more to survive. Looks like, so double defend is an option or hologram defend is an option, unless we also draw burns. Uh, hmm. So let's just say that there are five blocks in the population and that we need any two of these, plus the, the thingy to survive. What are the odds of that? About 57%, which is pretty similar to our odds with the other line too. This is where Frozen Eye would be really, really nice, huh? You know, doing the math, it seems like it's pretty close one way or the other. Honestly, our survival odds aren't even affected that much by rebounding the Meteor Strike or not. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do then. What do we get? We get Go for the Eyes and Hologram, which I think is enough to survive on its own. So we don't actually quite kill here, but we don't die. As long as we Hologram the Charge Battery. Go for the Eyes reduces this to 24 damage. We get to Meteor Strike as well, which we're ultimately still going to need to do. And we get hit with Inferno here. So total damage will be 24, yeah, 24 plus 2, 26. We're currently on 19, so yeah, we're we're actually okay here. More or less. Actually, how much exactly hit points do we go to? Because I'll take the guaranteed win out of this fight, no matter what it looks like. So 26, 19. 19 plus 8. So yes, we'll live on one just from Hologram Defend here. And I think that means we actually want to hologram the Meteor Strike and play it again. We're also going to get a new card when Hologram goes away. We want that because ultimately we still need to kill Hexaghost to win this fight. Get reprogram. Won't be enough. We're not quite there uh, in terms of killing the ghost here. I will play the reprogram though. No reason not to. Why not auto shield? Because when you play hologram, you gain block, and therefore auto shields will not be able to give you any block. Don't play ho don't play hologram and fetch auto shields. You'll be very sad. You'll be very sad, indeed. Cool. And now we get to keep the fire potion this way as well. Spooky fight. Terrifying fight, quite frankly. We could take a multicast. Thing is, we don't actually have anything to spend that energy on, really. Could take a bias cognition to gain massive amounts of focus, but currently we don't have the orbs. Could take an amplify. Quite frankly, bias cognition is one of the best ways to win with relatively few card plays, so even though it doesn't really combo with the deck as it is, I'm very inclined to pick it up here. All you had to do was win the fight. I'd really like to see a glacier, a doom and gloom. And electrodynamics, anything like that. They'll all be a lot better later on with a biased cognition. Do I take a cursed key, bringing us to five base energy per turn in exchange for having to be cursed if we open a chest? Or do I take a calling bell, giving me a unremovable curse along with three immediate relics? I have to imagine getting this Meteor Strike to be guaranteed playable every turn is got to be of some value to us. And of the energy relics presented before us, I think the Cursed Key is the 
better deal than the Sozu. Preventing us from gaining new potions is a pretty crippling downside, especially when it comes to taking on the elites of Act 2. We don't have to open any chests for a little while, at least not until the middle of Act 3. And hopefully with the extra money from the courier, we can deal with the pain of removing the curses. So I think the curse key is more power now. Could be that the calling bell is the better take, not knowing what the relics are or aren't, so I can't make that call. Let's take the curse key. I think we're going to be a lot more operational on 5 energy. Let's see. Spooky act layout. If I want to open a chest, there's one here that's very reasonable. I probably want to do something like this. Take a few combats, get an early elite after a res site, event, then shop, one more late elite. I don't really feel like we're necessarily in shape to fight the burning elite this act. And this would allow us to acquire the blue key and deal with the consequences while also rolling into the shop with quite a bit of money. Other option is go to this store and then fight maybe one of these elites. But the back half of the act looks weird if we do that. How do I feel about a relic that let me reroll combat rewards? Essentially reroll your card card reward. I, card reward rerolls would be very, very good. But I think being able to being able to have that as a, an effect would be definitely useful to the player. There's a hello world for anyone who wanted to see one in action. Bonk. Get him. Yeah, unfortunately the card is mo deck is mostly starter cards at this point in time. A little bit annoying. Is she recycled bias? Probably. Might have wanted to use the fire potion there, but we're okay. If I play this echo form, I get to echo form this algorithm. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. That permanently stacks its uh, block number twice. Smoke bomb. What a luxury. And card rewards we're not particularly interested in. Guess we might want a ball lightning, huh? If I have a bias cognition, I'm more interested in dark and frost storms, but maybe I shouldn't ignore by a, a, a ball lightning. Though unupgraded, pretty easy to ignore. And I'm, I'm not feeling it. Dead branch will provide. Or else. I'm fine with that actually. Let's keep the keep the damage orbs for the moment. Play the meteor strike next time we draw it. Keep this auto shields as well. Easy peasy. As they say. So three energy, four cards left. Currently at 14 block. 
This brings us to 20. So yeah, defend, defend, zap will be enough. Here's our meteor strike. Which notably won't kill it immediately, huh? Well, it'll do 8 plus 8 plus 24. It's not quite enough. Dang it. Why is this so tricky? So, use the fire potion to end this now, or take 6 and draw yet again. Hmm. Definitely feels like we want to upgrade the Meteor Strike next. Pretty short on useful card awards and potions at the moment. No, I'm not going to spend my Fire Potion on this. There we go. We can swap out the Smoke Bomb for a Block Potion, which is quite good. There is a Frost Orb in the form of Cold Snap. Giving us one frost and dealing six damage. That I'm going to be taking. We don't necessarily want three plasma orbs all the time. Usually advocate going for the Centurion first in this fight. Centurion will become enraged if the Mystic perishes. Attacking with a times three multi-attack repeatedly that can be quite nasty. There we go. fight. We did lose the potion, but that's okay. Another pretty mediocre set of rewards. A little concerned about this upcoming elite that we'd like to be able to fight our way through. We could opt out entirely and try to get two card removals instead. But if we don't get some more card rewards that actually do something for us, I'm not sure what we're going to be able to accomplish. I think we forge onwards here. Although I might be resting at the rest site. Very happy to see a free card upgrade offered here, and it's going to be to this Meteor Strike. Our best damage card should do six more here, I think. Going to upgrade the Bias Cognition soon, but this is currently what's carrying the deck around, so we need to make it more impactful. Get it? Impactful? Yeah, you get it. This bird in a fire potion range, just in case. Pretty scared of the Chosen here, though. Quite frankly. Be weak next turn. Both of them are going to attack me next turn. Looks like we'll fire potion the bird, which I don't like, but feels pretty necessary given the situation I've now arrived at. All right. We found the cold snap. Do play the hello world, don't play the zap. Playing the zap would be too much. Too much fun. Oh, I can't rebound. Actually, yes, I can, right? So we go. 
Cold Snap, Rebound, Meteor Strike. Claw. We do at least get a very good potion, the Essence of Darkness, letting us channel one Dark Orb per orb slot. We're also offered pretty efficient block card leap plus, or another hologram minus. Quite frankly, the hologram might be better here. A little hard to say. Take the hologram. And I think I should rest. We're below 34 health, which is the amount of damage slavers can do on turn one. Our upgrade would be bias cognition, but I don't think that upgrade actually helps us all that much. So I would mostly like to just survive this encounter, which is these nerds. Although notably, I did have the anchor and I've drawn genetic algorithm as well. So we're not taking any damage here on turn one. Turn two onwards is a different story. I'm going to use the Thingy Juice, the Essence of Darkness. And I think I'm going to want to rebound the dual cast on a future turn. Let's go Zap. Let's strike here. I could rebound Equilibrium, or I can just Equilibrium. Keep the rebound. I, want to, I think I want to be rebounding dual cast, so I'm going to play the Equilibrium now. Even though it's excessive. And then create three Dark Orbs. I never thought about hologramming dual casts. Foolish. All right, well, we can kill the Red Slaver easily then. That's the good news. Hologram, dual cast, hologram. And I can still rebound equilibrium if I want. That sounds like a pretty good turn, quite frankly. Although maybe I don't even need to rebound. It could be cold snap equilibrium. Either way, it looks like it needs to start with the double energy here. So, do Dark Orbs, very notably, always target the enemy with the lowest health. That's why when I dual cast, hologram dual cast, it's the Red Slaver who dies. Ooh. But then... Biased Electro Equilibrium? Also kills the Red Slaver, and does so much more besides. I'll take it. And a boop to you too, sir. But wait, I'm not done. With the blue candle, we can play unplayable curse cards to lose one hit point and exhaust the curse, creating a new card. That's pretty interesting. Stack could actually be surprisingly useful here. I'm pretty happy skipping as well. Because of the Velvet Choker, multicasting isn't so appealing to me. Janice wanted to say thank you for how use helpful your def recent defect runs have been. I'm finally getting to the heart on almost any run on A20 once you get past Kremlin Knob, who is definitely a big threat. We pretty much chumped Grumlin Knob with this deck. It was pretty fun, thanks to the four energy of Velvet Choker. Do I think a dual cast upgrade would be good so that we could play Meteor on five energy and then keep the turn going? Maybe. There are other ways that that could end up happening anyway, like with a lantern. So I'm not entirely convinced of its necessity at the moment. So we are, as aforementioned, going to open this chest. A medium-sized chest containing an Art of War, which I think is pretty good. However... I would like to not have to open another chest this run, so I think I am going to take the Sapphire Key. 
It's not quite good enough. Choose one of 20 cards. Ooh. I really like a glacier or something. Are we going to do damage to collector? Dead branch. Got it. Or an electrodynamics. As much as I like this heal, I don't think I need it here. Not when I could have a sunder or a reinforced body. No frost orbs, though. Doesn't the blue candle make opening chests better? We could consider opening the next chest, but... It's still... Because of the velvet choker, the blue candle's not as good as you'd want it to be. I guess I'll take reinforced. Seems pretty good. This deck would take a reprogram, actually, in a heartbeat. Like, enthusiastically would we take a reprogram. This is a good time to recall, oddly enough. So I can upgrade whatever I buy at the shop. Later on. Here we go. Data disc, Dolly's Mirror, another copy of Equilibrium, and a defragment all here in the store. And don't forget, we have Courier, so anything we purchase will be have something else behind it as well. Cool-headed, too, if we're looking for Frost. Does the Choker count Echo Form cards played? Yes. Yes, indeed. Mirror a strike. I mean, we could mirror the Meteor Strike, and I'd be pretty cool with that. Especially since it's upgraded. I think that's quite reasonable. Let's see what's behind the equilibrium. A leap. Tiny leap, too. I oh, know it's normal size. Don't know that I want the unupgraded defrag. But being able to do data disk and a second. Meteor Strike seems pretty good to me. Could also take White Bee Statue, giving us a potion after every combat. That is very broadly useful. But we can get potions anyway. Eternal Feather behind that one. Double Meteor Strike. I'm in. And I can still buy the Cool Headed? Yes, please. So here's where I can use the blue candle to get a new card right away instead of a new card next turn. I think I might rather just have the new card next turn. Play bias, strike, strike, all for one. Try to make something happen. Just a store. It's not looking right. Tell you what. It's not right. I'm locked just fine this turn. Not playing Meteor Strike would be a weird choice, though, yeah? Well, actually. Yeah, we go Equilibrium, go for the Eyes, Defend, Strike, Strike. Now we can keep the turn going. Although I can't play multiple Meteor Strikes, huh? But if I Meteor Strike this turn, my ability to block is very limited. I'll take at least 8 damage. We Meteor Strike next turn. Let's get more Lightning Orb damage that way. Okay, so we do it as follows. Recycle. 
Then it's gotta be Meteor Strike, Dual Cast. Equilibrium twice. Now we can do basically whatever the heck we want. Get a shuriken for playing three attacks in one turn, we'll get a point of strength. That'll happen sometimes. Could consider white noise, I think at this point most powers are somewhat useful to us. And it does generate another new card besides. Problem is it's two card plays to get one power down. Good thing is powers are very useful when you've got Velvet Choker. I think I'll take it. I think it's got enough likelihood of being quite useful since it makes two, two new cards. Figure it'll come in pretty, pretty effective. Strong. Perfect. So we hologram the meteor strike. Rebound the equilibrium. Powers for the price of one. Beautiful. How many double energies have we seen? I am so sad that we could only take one of them because of the Velvet Choker. Just think of what this run could have been. We now had three or four of them upgraded with the dead branch. Absurd. It feels like a pyramid run, right? We're building our own runic pyramid thanks to the power of two equilibriums. A very, very good use of our enormous energy reserves. Ice cream next? You hope so. Could upgrade this white noise. Could upgrade one of our block cards. I like the holograms unupgraded as they are. I could rest, but I don't really think we're going to need more health for Collector. We should be okay in that fight. Although it is going to be a pretty scary fight, especially with no potions. Collector could actually be quite nasty indeed. Really all up to what Dead Branch gives us. And I don't feel like I have a sufficiently good upgrade. Maybe the Cool Headed is nice. Hmm. All right, I'll try upgrading the cool-headed. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure that we're actually going to be okay. It's all going to depend on the draws and the dead branch. So far, pretty good. Very good. So far, very good. Perfect. Although I don't think I should play the Bias Cognition too early in this fight. We should not play it this turn. This could be a good turn to get some Shuriken Strength. Recycle Sender, go Meteor Strike, Cold Snap, Strike Strike. Defend. Two strikes kills this nerd, too. So we easily kill one. Yeah, let's do that. Recycle the Sundered. Oh, I like it. Perfect. Although we'll do it this way. 
So I am going to need the energy this turn. Additional biased. Interesting. It's definitely a painful turn, and one of the reasons I considered resting before this fight. Not too worried yet, since we have two biased, as long as we hold on to them for the moment until after the mega debuff goes down, we should be alright. Gotta make sure we put damage on the minions for now. This does hurt a lot, though. Hold to the neck for next turn. Okay, just give me the meteor strike. Oh, nice. And it's good that we get attacked this turn. That way, go for the eyes works and the algorithm is relevant. Almost makes me afraid to play the Meteor Strike. We'll be okay. Rebound it. Keep building strength. Definitely play this Zap. Could preserve the Algo for the Holograms, which are gone. Never mind. Get this in play. More cards each turn to choose from will be very, very helpful. Zap. Could put a frost orb in front there. Maybe you should have. It's now time to use the bias cognitions. This is what? Meteor strike. Bias cog. Meteor strike. Equilibrium cold snap. No, cold snap. Then meteor strike. To put the cold snap in front. Bias cog. Cold snap. Meteor strike. be the big block. And then make it even more with consume, I imagine. Though, so, cost me two health to do so. Gotta be worth it. Can't get attacked next turn, so we don't want a frost orb in front. But I suppose I do want another frost orb. Played three attacks there. So now losing two focus per turn. We still got time to figure this out. Next turns, the debuffs have worn off. And we have go for the eyes in hand, so we should be okay here. But note that focus is fading fast. So that's a little worrisome. We're going to get attacked for a lot next turn. We need to deal some damage. Have some energy. I think I don't need that extra frost orb this turn. We'll see. Got Meteor Strike, Meteor Strike available. But no reinforced body. I'm a little concerned here that we're going to run out of steam shortly. So after one Meteor Strike, we'll have nine energy. I have to dual cast to play the other one. I think we'll be fine, actually. Okay. So Meteor Strike, then dual cast.
And rebound. Meteor Strike. Go for the eyes, you. Strike one more time. Doesn't do any damage. Church Battery. Yes. Okay, resummoning again. This time we have to just focus on the Collector as much as we can, for as long as we can. bring an end to this fight shortly, as our focus is going to be zero momentarily. And the Collector now has less health than the minions combined, although it seems to me maybe we should have just done that last turn, hey? Perhaps if I focused on the Collector instead of on the minions, we'd be done with this already. Now, indeed, it looks like we're doomed instead. Hmm. Four cards left. Incoming damage, 45. A lock in hand. A mere 18 plus 9, 27. We can kill one of the minions, though. So we can block 27 plus 12 versus 31 plus 7. No, that's not enough either, huh? I'm oh, sorry, not, uh, 27 plus 12. Excuse me. 39 versus 38. Yes, that does work, actually. I could also do 11, 11, 11, 17. Not enough to kill the collector, but enough to kill, yes, one of them. Well, that seems like it's got to be it then. We rebound, cold snap, strike, leap. It's the cold snap we rebound, I imagine. This looks more manageable, though. 12, 12, 10, 9. 12, 12, 10 kills you. You can do it the better way, right? Go for the eyes plus on the torch head. Nay. Go for the eyes plus on the collector. Gain one strength. Go for the eyes minus on the torch head. Lock. Maybe should have used the battery. It doesn't matter. Definitely should have. Get dead, collect nerd. Perish. Thank you, Shuriken. GG. Well. You can see why I considered resting there before the Collector fight. I wasn't sure if that's how it was going to go or not. Ultimately, we sneak by with a cool-headed upgrade, but boy, was that a clencher. Echo Form is still pretty good here, because we have Meteor Strikes in the deck. So Echo Form is exceedingly tempting, although Buffer to block a hit from a particular foe also pretty tempting. Really like Echo Form Equilibrium, Echo Form Meteor Strike, Echo Form Bias Cognition, Echo Form Genetic Algorithm. Lots of good Echo Form targets there that I'm willing to take. I'm also very happy to take probably a Pandora's Box, transform seven cards, including four unupgraded strikes, and turn them into please something better than that. Other options, Black Star would give us more relics from elites. We may not be able to control how many elites we fight next act. Or Nuclear Battery will give us a Plasma Orb to start with, making the Meteor Strikes a lot more immediately playable. But I, I'm going to take the Pandoras here. We get two Storms and two other Powers, as well as Buffer, Go for the Eyes, and Claw. Well, well. That's a lot of lightning, friends. And then we fight the Awakened One. Terrifying. 
absolutely terrifying. How do they do it? How do they do it? The good news is the go for the eyes that we have will help a lot against Awaken 1. And we have a recycle that we can use to get rid of the powers I don't want to play. The bad news is they'll be turned into new random cards, and I don't know how good or bad that will be. I don't know if I want to fight more elites than necessary here. How many upgrades do we have that would be good? Upgrading defragment seems pretty important. Maybe we'll do this. To go this way instead, go through the shop. If I feel it necessary. This is why we wanted to get the blue key out of the way, because the Burning Elite here is positioned such that I would have to fight the Burning Elite with a curse in order to remove the curse afterwards and get the blue key, which would be very, very unsatisfactory, let's say. Call it equilibrium your equilibrium. It's that easy. More powers, please. Got to play my algorithms? I did. It's on me. I grew mad with powers. Steam Barrier Plus, not too bad. Alongside stuff like the Meteor Strikes. We do need a little bit more block density now. I'll take one. This is happening. Yeah, don't forget, play... Imperative. Ideally with echo form, but not mandatory. Good. But for bless you. Another unupgraded defragment to give us even more focus. And I have two storms. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take that since we're going through two rest sites anyway. Keep taking and upgrading powers. As long as I can get reliable frost orb generation, this is going to work out really well with Joker. Look at all those powers. Easy. Glad I have a buffer. And another buffer. Although I'm not going to exhaust algorithm to make it happen. No. Bad news. Car. 
Almost. Maybe that was the time for the Essence of Steel? Maybe. Could take Impaled River for a bit of card draw, but it's alright. Not amazing. Tip Nerd in chat says, hey, does Rupture synergize with Combust? It doesn't seem to add any strength like I thought it would. It should, yes, but you have to actually take the damage. So if you have, the, for example, the Tungsten Rod Relic, as chat seems to have spotted, you will not gain any strength since you prevented the damage. It's a brutal rule, but that's how it works. All right, Shop or Elite? Shop or Elite? Got another shop coming up later. How badly would I like an orange pellets anyway? Very, very badly. All right. Fight these nerds for a rare relic? These guys are pretty tough, but I think we have what it takes. And if they kill me, I'm cool with that. What a turn one. Uh, Meteor Strike puts me to one energy, Dual Cast puts me to four, so I can then Algorithm and Echo Form. Perfect. Can't get much better than that. I better my odds by doubling the white noise instead? I think we still need to get this thing's health down critically low. Double white noise gives me more chance for card draw or buffer this turn, though. Let's do it. Haha, -ha, the second one gave me a buffer. Easy every time. Easy peasy. What a flawless fight. For winning that fight with buffers, we win buffers forevermore. Now the fossilized helix will give us one buffer at the start of each combat. If we want these meteor strikes to do substantially more damage, we should strongly consider a beam cell, specifically an upgraded beam cell, to give them a lot more oomph. Could also consider a stack for a better block option. I'm taking the beam cell, quite frankly. I'll go flex pot over the stinky potion. Bring it, nerds. Double cool headed? Double cool headed. Easy every time. Still not making this easy on me. I take offense to that. This does not quite the right amount of damage until I play the rebound, which will be here.
So be seven plus four. That saves me one buffer. Perfect. Might have been better if I just double thundered in the first place on that turn. Certainly double meteor strikes is what I'm going to do right now. And then... Try. Let me try that again. Double algorithm is what I'm going to do this turn. And then kill the fools. Gotta get that double algorithm in there. Otherwise, what even are you, really? So many double energies. So little time. Alright. Let's upgrade these defragments. We should maybe consider upgrading buffer as well. This is why we recalled in Act 2, ultimately, is so that we'd have more opportunities to upgrade cards acquired a bit later. And that's ended up working out beautifully. Oh my goodness. What a shop. Burning Capacitor is here to offer us more orb slots. Capac regular Capacitor is here to offer us more orb slots. There's an extra Meteor Strike. And more. Pretty spicy. You know, we're still actually kind of lacking the actual orb generators. Uh, I think we definitely want Runic Capacitor over regular Capacitor, with so much focus gain. Definitely. Of course, that means I won't be able to afford pellets there. I'm okay with that. Although that means I probably don't want to buy a card removal here. At least not yet. Meteor Strike Dummy. The power. Could the Runic Capacitor cause Desire with the issues to cycle Meteor Strike? Yes, but... I think it's going to be worth it for the other orbs. Quite dramatically so. Alright, I will upgrade Buffer next, actually. I'm sufficiently scared. We're not going to open this chest. We don't want the relic inside. At least not if it comes with a curse. Easy. Frost. Uh, more lightning, please. Got five buffer charges, so I don't really need to block that much, huh? Boop. There's an electrodynamics if I want to be able to make my lightning orbs hit all enemies, and we're going to be generating a lot of lightning orbs. Again, the only problem is the awakened one. Against whom too many powers will be a bad thing. Electro lets me take... Give me that. Let's me take... Heat sinks as well. Be pretty happy with it. Ooh. Happily. I need to play the buffer now. Not the bias cog, not yet. Good form is not in play.
one short. Dex potion would have actually worked there. That's pretty funny. I don't think we'll need it either way. Bonk. Blonk. From the bias next turn. Oh, even better. Still got buffers after all. Don't think I actually got to play algorithm in that fight. Whoops. These potions are probably fine. Colors potion counts against one of our cards for the turn. Ah. All right, and so we can either remove a card here or try to save up money so that we can afford orange pellets at the final shop. It seems like a better idea. Could also buy another storm, but I think that's a bad idea with the awakened one upcoming. Another option, buy an ancient potion here. Plan on using it in one specific fight, the heart fight, with proper timing. Maybe that's just better. Because I think the Reptomancer is really the... Or the heart is really the only fight where we need to block the focus down of the... Bias Cognition. We already saw pellets in the first shop, too. Oh, okay. Good to know. Well then. All the more reason to swap that potion out. Definitely forgot about that. Come at me, worms. They have obeyed the order. And they're doing precisely that. And I'm terrified. Can someone please help me? Kill the one with the most strength. They all have the most strength. Got it. Double your sender, double your fun. in doubt, just play more copies of Storm. Surely the Awakened One will let you go. Unupgraded Defrag? I can't take that. Nor a third Storm, actually. I, I think we'll be in too much trouble if I do. Let's see. One last event or one last combat? Let's take one last event. What do you got for me, game? Perfect. Fight a boss, get a rare relic. Much better than a, a regular combat. Because we also get a whole heckin' relic. Still get the card reward, too. And with buffer, no one can stop me. Not even the Guardian.
What about the upgrade all there? We're going to need to benefit from the post-boss heal, but I think you might be right that uh, upgrading all the cards in this deck would actually help it quite a bit. Upgrading the storms would be actively bad for the Awakened One fight, problematically. Other than that, though, things are pretty good. And we get a bird-faced urn. That's why you don't take the upgrade all. And another frost orb, which I will greedily click on to really round out the deck. Now we heal two for every power we play, which is going to give us a substantially improved odds of winning in the coming fights here. Maybe it's Awakened one I need this potion for. Hmm. Guess we'll have to see how this goes. We won't be playing any of the storms during this fight, just looking to build up frost orbs wherever possible. I do think I'm going to play electrodynamics because otherwise I don't have a good way to kill these birds. So that's going to be a slight obstacle, slight problem, slight probstacle. is also going to be a slight propstacle. So, total incoming block, 48 plus 12. 60 damage. If I double energy, we go to 8, 8 times 7. It's not 60, is it? 56. Dexterity Potion could change things for us here. Let's actually see what we get from the Double Energy first. Elite. Okay, yeah, it's not going to change much. We don't want to play the Defragment or Buffer this turn. This is a pretty difficult fight. Let's do it. Could have actually played the white noise. Just to see what it contained. We are going to play Echo Form. As well as, I think, Algorithm and a Cold Snap here. So that we can double the first card we play each turn. That's going to help a lot. Although, yes, again, giving Awakened One more stuff. Always a bit of a downside. Birds are both dead next turn. We're going to get another multi-attack hit at our way next turn. Fortunately, we can start to stock up on Frost Orbs here. Double Cool-Headed. We can also start weakening the Awakened One. The Awakened One. And we can start recycling storms, too. Now this turn looks a lot more manageable. When it's only 10 by 4 and we're already blocking for 20, life looks pretty good. We, we definitely don't need to use the Ancient version in this fight. We'll keep that for later. Just 
Still 1 defragment plus in the draw pile. That's going to be pretty good with double loop. Because each loop will give us more than 6 block. As long as we have frost orbs. So we're playing. Three turns of retaining our hand. Time for you to die. Now the Awakened One comes back with 16 strength, which is definitely, definitely scary. We have some answers for them. Including a buffer charge to start. Go for the eyes to massively weaken them. And more. Also, we might just kill them. That's always fun, too. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, though. We could have healed more off the bird face turn. I have to imagine we're going to be full health at the end of this fight, one way or the other, actually. We'll be fine. Easy peasy. Lemony squeezy. Try to imagine yourself as being at full health. Hey there, Sour Mouth. Live on the east coast of the US, but I was originally born and raised in Canada. Edmonton, Alberta is my original homeland. Though I wasn't actually there all that long. I've been uh, here far more longer than I was there at this point. And grats on getting that claw win there, Thunder Squirt. Always happy to hear that the channel helped people figure out ways to win that they wouldn't have thought of otherwise. They didn't want that. Bungle the buffer. Tis I. Two more cards. Give me my frost back and meteor strike again, please. Okay, this feels like we'll be under control momentarily. At least, hopefully, so. Echo form, then storm, so I can dual cast. Let 
Maybe I had a kill? I think we're fine. Seven times seven. Don't mind if I do. But first, though, we play more powers. I could technically keep looking for random powers to go all the way to full health. Doesn't seem like it's worth it very much. GG. To thump, to thump, to thump of deep pulsing dread can be found throughout the room is this, the heart of the spire, the source of all these power cards. We made it through the Awakened One, using only a dex potion. Now we have an ancient potion to block a debuff of our choosing, and a bias cognition with which to go. Upgrade the reinforced, I think. Other reasonable upgrade that go for the eyes, maybe the white noise of the double energy. Maybe one of the holograms so we can keep it around. I'd rather upgrade reinforced if we're gonna upgrade a block card. One more biased cognition. There's also an orb slot potion, just get two more orb slots to work with. A Blessing of the Forge that could let me upgrade stuff in my hand. Can I afford the Bias Cog and the Blessing of the Forge? Yes. Yes, I can. That's only 106 gold. So we can super duper do that, and that seems most likely to be worth it. Shame no... Um, heat sinks. Bob, what we got, we'll have to do. Don't make me lose my buffer like this. Please, no, sir. Thank you. Rebound to go for the eyes? Nah. Gonna rebound nothing here. Is it even darkness zap rebound? That seems better than even sapping artifact off you. Oh, uh, well, maybe not. Okay, let's lose the... Lose the lightning orb then. So this turn right here is going to be really challenging. Double equilibrium is not too bad. We could double meteor strike, but I won't be able to play anything else. I think we should double equilibrium, then hologram, then play equilibrium again. So we get 39 block plus 9. We'll take a little bit of damage here, but not actually that much. Buffer will save some, and the damage we do take, the bird face turn will quickly heal. We'll also retain everything in our hand for three turns. Meaning... Some good stuff will come our way. I'm going to echo from the buffer, why wouldn't I, right? No need to take any damage here. Let's amplify the defragment rather than the biased here. Or no, I have to have to do biased. Excuse me. Amplify biased, which doesn't even happen. Let's play biased one time. Oh, fiddlesticks. No, we're actually fine. But I have to play a little less quickly than that if I want to actually beat the heart. That's for sure. So, I think the card we're doubling this turn. Bias cognition. Forget this meteor strike. Just play all the focus stuff. Double biased. Defragment. Electro. It's that easy. More biasing.
more retaining. Lose five focus every turn. Draw no storms. Ever. Don't need to buff that genetic. Who needs it? Centennial Puzzle will help us a lot with card draw against the heart. And I think either a static discharge or a capacitor could both be really good solutions here. Stick a discharge. If we ever receive unblocked attack damage, channel more lightning. We can even upgrade that with the Blessing of the Forge. So my plan is to use the Ancient Potion, oof, what a turn, on an early Bias Cognition, but we might also want to use it to block the initial debuff here. I think since we have a starting buffer and we might be able to block the big hit with that, it's better to use the Ancient Potion somewhere else. I guess I'll go for double lightning orbs this turn. And a darkness, sure. Yeah, big hit first. So all we need to do is keep the buffer intact, which is easy enough to do. Here's a bias cognition. We could play it along with the ancient potion right now. Could wait till the Blessing of the Forge is a little bit better. Don't necessarily think that's a good idea. Yeah, I could even play it upgraded, but I don't think I should play it upgraded. I do think we dish out a lot more damage a lot more quickly if I do play it now. So I think now is the time to do it. Unknown Force says, have I ever drawn all five statuses on turn two of heart? Yes. Um, several times, actually, because if you end your turn with zero cards in the draw pile, that's guaranteed to happen. Uh, and I've done that a few times. Purely randomly, though, I've never had it kind of dynamically occur. Is this the extra lightning orb I really wanted there? Do I play the rebound now? I think so. Just deal the 13 damage. Okay, we do get Echo Form on this turn. Along with White Noise and some other stuff. Equilibrium, but I can't Equilibrium and keep the Echo Form because of the Void. So I think this is the turn where we take a bunch of damage. Shame we didn't draw the Static Discharge to make it actually work. We'll also draw cards if I take damage. Which is ultimately going to be Echo Form anyway. We could keep it with the Blessing of the Forge, but then we're not upgrading Static Discharge. I suppose that's okay, actually. We're also not duplicating a card next turn, which I think is more problematically not allowed. Okay, this is quite fine. It's also upgradable for a permanent one point of focus. Hmm. No. Alright, we're definitely going to want a double A defragment. It's a bit of a weird turn. Glad we're not being attacked here. Let's 
All right, deck, keep me alive. Thank you. Thank you. So, upgrade this discharge. Can't believe we haven't seen any of the frost so far. What a scary draw order. Good news is we're totally fine. Because we have algorithm blocking this turn, buffer blocking next turn. No problem of any downside. Uh, although... There's a lack of block in the draw pile. Which means the buffer won't do me much good. Hmm. New to... Still gonna play this twice. Double buffer now, but then the beat of death immediately removes your double buffer. And you have no buffer, and you're very sad. This fight's not going to last much longer. One way or the other. All right, I think we just ignore the beat of death and get a lot of frost. I think that's what we do here. We should have used the Blessing of the Forge somewhere in here. I'll use it now. Upgrade the Electrodynamics and begin the Ultra Zapping. G G. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.